I know people want to see my cat. My, it's, it's really up to my cat whether they want to be part of the live stream or not. Um, usually not. They're kind of shy. Uh, so I do have um, I do have a top list, top, top 20, top 500, whatever list. Thank you, Logan. Um, and trying to follow the chat too. Sounds like I'm coming through fine, so that's good. Um, what do I want to do today? I only discovered about a couple weeks ago that I, I guess my channel's big enough now to where I can get geographic granularity on the people who watch the channel down to the city level, which is kind of exciting. So, and, and I, I put out a, a message on, um, on my YouTube community this morning saying, hey, I've got a top 10 list, and somebody immediately guessed what it was going to be, which is essentially where, what are the cities where people come from who watch your channel. And so that's what we're going to do. But I want you guys to play a guess along, and I'm going to do a top 20. It actually gives me 500. It might even give me more if I ask for it. It gives me the top 500, which is ridiculous. There's some amazing cities in there. But so this is going to be in the whole lifetime of this channel. In the whole lifetime of the channel, individual viewers, and I guess that would probably be IP addresses. Like if someone watches on their TV and their computer and their phone, it probably counts it three different times. But discrete individual viewing locations in each city. And it is by city. It'll give me like suburbs and stuff too. So this isn't a metro area. This is going to be city. Um, and so we're gonna do, I'm gonna do top 20, and I want people to guess, and I have, I have the chat on like slow mode or whatever, so you can't spam me with a whole bunch of guesses. I just want you to make like one guess for each of these. And I am going to start with number 20. I want people to guess what the number 20 city in terms of the number of individual viewers who watch this channel. Hang on, I have to look and see what it actually is. It is... Okay. Got it. Not seeing it yet. Not seeing it. Not seeing it. Not seeing it. Not seeing it. It's not adjusted per capita. It's just pure raw number. So the top five are probably going to be somewhat obvious. Don't... This is going so fast, I need to like slow it down, and I don't think I've seen it yet. A lot of good guesses. Ah, I see it, I see it. Colin? It's Sydney, Australia. Who guessed Sydney? Somebody guessed Sydney. No, it was good. It might have been more than one because it was going so fast. Yeah, it is weird. It is weird. There are a lot of Australian cities that show up on my like top 100, 500, whatever list, um, which I wouldn't necessarily think. Uh, I mean, I'd expect English speaking. That's fine. Um, but hmm, I don't know. Like, I'd expect maybe, I don't know. I, I just wouldn't expect to be top 20. There it is. Colin Pendlebury. Colin Pendlebury. Good job. I don't have any prizes. You just get your prizes, like the notoriety of having guessed correctly. I'm sure that's exciting. Um, cool. Okay. That's fun. 19. People ready to guess number 19. Go. And if you've already guessed for number 20, it doesn't matter. I'm just looking for it now. Who do you have for 19? Not seeing it yet, not seeing it. Not seeing it. Ah, I see it. Michael, it is DC, which is lower than I would have thought. It is Washington, DC. Although, again, this is cities proper, so you have to think of, you know, how, how big is the city in relation to its metro area. So it is, number 19 is 
DC. Good stuff. Thank you for the super chat, Giovanni. I really live in Vegas because I grind the poker blackjack tables for extra cash. I, I care to deny that. Um, I, I have tried poker before and I've played blackjack before. I just, I don't know. It's negative expectation for me. That's, that's not a, that's not a good use of my time. That's what I decided. Um, people who are good at poker, like either online or especially in person poker, I have a lot of respect for them. That is not easy. Um, I'm good at the math part of it, right? But there's a lot more to it than the math part of it. It's a whole bunch of game theory and you know, if you're in person, you know, bluffing is important. Um, anyway, uh, no, I don't do videos. I don't do any, yeah, I don't gamble. I, I've, been on, I've been on sports a couple of times. Actually, I won, I've been on sports twice this year and I won both of those. I feel good about that. Um, but only because I had, uh, I don't know, whatever. Had some insight. An inside source. Um, okay, let's let's hang on. I gotta look and make sure I know what. Okay, I know what eighteen is. So go on eighteen. Go on what number eighteen is. Ash, I can't root for the Astros. I just can't do it. Oh, so we got a Fern. <laughs> Fern. Yes. Thank you, Fern. Eighteen is Atlanta. Fern K. Han is correct. Thank you, Fern. Um, which is also, I don't know, maybe lower than I would expect. But again, city's proper. Um, total wine, yeah. I'm kind of a fan. I just don't live near a total wine, so I don't know. I usually go to Trader Joe's. Um, plus, every, you know, every state is different. Like, if you want to buy like liquor. I don't know, you can buy it in store in Washington now. It's been that way for a couple of years. There are a lot of, there are a lot of states where you can buy it in a grocery store, um, including Vegas, uh, Nevada. Um, lag between the chat and the vid. That's not fun. Um, yeah, I have been to Omega Mart. I have been to Omega Mart. Um, is it worth the price? Uh, probably. Yeah, at least the first time. I mean, you, you need to spend a long time at Omega Mart. You probably need, you probably need to get there close to when it opens and leave, um, <laughs> close to closing. Because it is so, it's, it's very layered. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say any more about it. But there, there are many ways to have fun at Omega Mart. Um, I expect a lot of you don't know what I'm talking about. But that's okay. Google it, Omega Mart. Okay. Uh, let me see what 17 is. Okay, 17, go. What is number 17? 17. Don't see it yet. Don't see it. It's going fast. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't see it yet. It's not Pyongyang. That's a good guess, though. Thank you, Gnome. Uh, this one should be, like, super obvious to be in the top 20. I don't see it yet. I don't see it. We've been talking about it, but I don't see it. Yeah, there is Las Vegas. Somebody else probably guessed it. It's been going so fast. I think Dan. 17 is Vegas. Um, I don't know. Is that too low or too high? I mean, in terms of like city size, like 17 would be punching above its weight, but given that I do a lot of Vegas content. Um, so that's a good one. What did. Okay, okay, that's good. Bogalusa, Louisiana is not in the top 20, um, but that's a good guess. Okay, where am I? Oh, okay, 16, go, go, 16. Number 16 is not Baton Rouge. It's not Camden, New Jersey. Uh, 
so fast. Yeah, I did ask, was Reese in here? Somebody said Reese, I don't know if Reese is in here. I did try to ask him for tips on live streams because he does a lot of them. And then I never got back and looked to see if he replied. So, um, cause he probably knows like there's probably a good way to slow this down. Kind of scrolling through to see, I don't see it. I don't see it. I saw it earlier for another number. No, 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 no. It's not Fairbanks. Also a good guess. We're guessing, if you came in late, we're guessing, these are the top 20 cities where my viewers, not necessarily subscribers, but just viewers come from. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the country, because that's not the U.S., and it's not Mexico or Canada. Oh, man. Hope I didn't miss it. It's not any of the Londons. It is. Uh, there we go. Oh, someone A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It is Melbourne, Australia. It is Melbourne. How about that? Melbourne ranks ahead of Sydney. Would you have guessed that? I wouldn't have guessed it. It is Melbourne. Melbourne, yeah. You know, this is the US, so I know things are pronounced really in Australia. I just, I don't know. Like, how does it sound like if, I, if someone from the US says Melbourne or Amsterdam? Like, I don't say Amsterdam, I say Amsterdam. Like, I don't know. Like, is it pretentious if I say it a certain way? I don't know. I'm just trying to sound like an American, so whatever. Uh, okay, let's go 15, 15, Amsterdam, I'm never going to do it, except for as a joke. Uh, it's going fast, it's going fast. Yeah, Calgary's just not. Oh, so we got BRP 12. It is Montreal, actually. It is Montreal. That was 15, right? If I see an interesting question or something dumb in the comments, I, I will respond to it. We don't have to do straight through top 20, although I do like top lists. Now I gotta see what 14 is. Okay, I know what 14 is. Sorry, I had to export it all to a spreadsheet. You know how it is. Favorite, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Blazers, um, only because the Sonics don't exist yet. Fourteen is not Vatican City. St. Louis, unfortunately, is not in the top 20. That's highly disappointing to me. But. Uh, I don't see it yet. I don't see it yet. Don't see it. Don't see it. Yes, Denver with a question mark. N N I K 257. It is Denver. Number 14 is Denver. Anything's really surprising yet? And I think the Australian ones are su surprising. And there, are, uh, there aren't going to be any others, I don't think, on the list. You know, we've got the two biggest ones, but other ones, Adelaide, Brisbane, probably pronouncing this all wrong, Perth, they all show up in like the top 100. Um, very interesting. Yeah, I was going to do something like top 10, like my top 10 favorite videos I've made or whatever. I was trying to think of something to do like to give this some structure. I landed on this, but I did think of doing something along those lines. Show us recycling calves. No, I'm not gonna do that. They're impressive though. No, not really. Um, okay, 13. Radio, okay, let's go 13. I don't make fun of Cheesecake Factory. Cheesecake Factory is 
like probably the best restaurant there is. Uh, don't see it yet. I don't see it yet. It's not fake London or London. Oh, got it. M A I L E San Diego. That one surprises me a little bit, actually. I don't know why, because I know for sure I do have, you know, I interact with um, subscribers who are from San Diego. Um, and it just doesn't jump to the top of my mind as like an urbanist, quote unquote, city. Um, but maybe it should. So, yeah, Monica, that's right. San Diego. It is real populous, that's true. It is over a million, right, for... So, that's, again, keep that in mind. These are cities proper. Um, good point. Thank you, Lucy Bikes. Oh, this is getting boring. I think it's fine. I think it's super interesting. This is super interesting. 12, go. You're just going to have to deal with it or just bail off. That's fine. Number 12. It is Dallas. Urban Jersey guy. Nice. 12 is Dallas. It's a big city, right? It says Fort Worth. I don't think Fort Worth is in here, though. Um, Fort Worth's over a million, right? I think. Okay. I will, I will break this up with responses to interesting comments and questions. Um, yeah. First time? Uh... Yeah, we're going 11, right? Number 11. God. It's just not fake London. Fake London is not. It's just not in the mix. Dude, dude, 11, 11. Can you feel the tension building for like what number one is? I'm sure you just can't guess it at all. I don't see it. It's not Jersey City. It's not home of the football team. It is not real London. Eh, kind of surprised. I've seen Seattle like 20 times on here. It's, it's not Seattle. Seattle might be further up on the list. I'm not sure. I literally didn't memorize the list. I have to keep going and looking at it. It is Portland. Keep it, boy. Sorry, if somebody else guessed that, you know, I can, I can imagine this, but it is Portland. Um, side note, it also gives me stats on, like, what the average view time for my videos um, for each city is. And Portland has the highest average view time, so I don't, I don't know what to make of that. Like, they have a longer attention span or whatever. And actually, I went down the list. You know who had, like, a way high average view time was Madison, Wisconsin. Anyway, interesting trivia. I don't know, I don't know what to make of that. Or, yeah, who knows what. I don't know what the... I, I could look at the lowest average view time, but who knows. Yeah, I'm a little surprised Portland's so low, too, because I do... I'm from Portland, and I do, I do a lot of, not a lot of Portland content, but I do talk about Portland in some videos. Um, yes, we should do number 10. Ready for number 10. Let's do it. There's only one, no, there's more than one viewer in Madison. Come on. 10, 10. Getting up there. These should be getting easier to get. Haven't seen it. It's not the Inland, Inland These are cities. Inland Empire is not a city. You have to choose a city. London. Anders. It's real London. Ten. Actual London. The correct London. I don't know, is that surprising? I mean, it's a big city, right? So, but, yeah, what are we doing? Recap for Alejandro. These are the top, we're doing the top 20 cities where 
my viewers originate from, according to my amazing analytics portal, um, over the lifetime of the channel, right? Which cities have generated the most city nerd video views? Yay, somebody's from the real London. That's good. Um, it would be interesting to know the top viewer cities per capita. That would have been more work. Probably not that much more work. I mean, I know how to do that. Um, it just didn't occur to me. Did my time in Shenzhen get in there? Probably not. I don't know if that would actually show up in the stats. Um, Oh, people want more sarcasm. You know what? That sarcasm takes preparation. It's hard work. I have to, actually, I have to. I don't know. It takes. It takes a lot of setup, right? I have to set something up, and then I have to figure out how to be sarcastic about it. And, you know, it's just not that easy. Okay, number nine is kind of interesting. We see. I see. I don't know which city has the most subscribers. I don't. I don't actually know. It doesn't tell you. I don't know why. Nine. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Somebody said it. Birdie Wolf got it right off the bat. Nine is Austin. Nine is Austin. Are people surprised by that? Because, I don't know. I mean, are people surprised that Austin is higher than Dallas? I mean, Austin's more like, eh. Is it urbanist? I don't know what it is. It's, it's oh, something. Um, but it's a smaller city, right? City proper than Dallas, isn't it? I think it is. What UK soccer team do you support? Football soccer team. I don't support. I like I like watching it. I don't, I don't have a particular team. Maybe Leeds. I don't know. I mean, just because it's got the Americans on it. Um, Top 10 truck nets per capita. I don't have that data. If you know where to get that data, I do want to do something else with trucks. I just don't want to be repetitive about it. Um, there's only so much you can say about it, right? See if Austin Proper is now a million people, so I'm not surprised at number nine. That's that's fair. That's a combination of things. Yeah, I was, I was surprised when I look at the, the top cities proper because it's not always what you think it's going to be. Um... Okay, ready to go, eight. Eight, go. Is the audio weak? I'm not using a lavalier mic today, um, just because I want to be able to move around and do stuff and not pull the cord all over the place. Uh, do we get eight? Andrew in Oregon said Philly, and that's true. It is Philly. These are getting easier, right? I mean, it's a little bit, what are the largest cities in the U.S.? in rank order. It's a little bit of that, but it's something else too. I don't know. I think it's an interesting list, like, because it's not just that, so it's different. And also you have to, you have to weigh international cities because those are showing up here too. Um, so it is Philly. And let's do seven. What stadium? Well, you're going to find out. You'll find out which stadium, because I made, I made this week's video already. Well, it's already a shot at, I'm still editing it. Uh, yes, Strummer Joe. Strummer Joe. Not just, uh, Joe Strummer says Houston, and Houston is the correct response for number seven. Seven is Houston. Any thoughts on urban planning in South American cities? I would like to get down to South America so I can form better opinions about that. That is Ray Dandridge behind me. Um, Texas is well represented. Well, Texas has a lot of big cities in it, but also, I don't know, I think possibly people may underrate how much interest there is in particular in cities proper in Texas, like in Dallas and Houston and then Austin, obviously, and you know, probably San Antonio. Those are all very big cities proper that I think that I think there's more interest in urbanist 
content than than like maybe the rest of the country would suspect. Um, am I gonna cover some European cities? I'm not sure. You mean like on the channel in general? I don't know. I do. I do like to do international content. It doesn't seem to do as well, right? I mean, I always have to strike a balance between what, what I'm interested in, which is international stuff often, <clears throat> and what people actually respond to. I don't want to put out a bunch of videos that are boring for people because then it kind of kills the channel. Um, Simon is always already jumping in with what the top four are in rank order. Um, and it's incorrect. Simon, they're good guesses. Uh, and Fern's, Fern's already jumping in with what number six is. Uh, I didn't even say that yet. You know, it's cheating, but six is San Francisco. Fern, thanks Fern. Thank you for the super chat, El Greco. What future transit project excites you the most? Oh man, um, first of all, so I get, I don't know, I get kind of a lot of questions along those lines. And a lot of times when I get those questions, I just want to send them to Reese's channel because Reese has strong, well-informed opinions on like transit projects and like uh, transit infrastructure and service types and like a lot of technical stuff that I'm, I care about, but I don't care as passionately about some about that as some other people do. I'm a little more interested in like, um, I'm interested in like Cheesecake Factory, honestly. Uh, so anyway, um, I'd have to think about that. What future transit project excites me the most? It's really hard to think of. I don't know. I mean, I think the subway to the sea in LA is Cool. I got to see some of the some of the ongoing construction on the purple line um, out to Beverly Hills. I don't know. I, I think LA is just fascinating. I mean it's it's such a it's such a hard problem because of the way the, the land use patterns are. But they really are investing a lot. I don't know if they're already always making the right investments, but they're investing a lot in trying to correct older mistakes. Um, okay. Which interstates to replace with high-speed rail? I don't know. I just don't think of it in those terms. And people, I don't know. I do get a lot of questions about, well, can't you just put high-speed rail in the median of existing freeways? And just don't think that works geometrically. Um, but, I mean, you could put lower-speed rail there, probably. Um, and it'd still be useful, potentially, but not actual high-speed rail. Uh, I do want to, what do I think of Battersea Power Station opening? Good use of an old building. I'm not aware of what they've done with that. I'm more of the building. Like, and I've been to like the Tate Modern. Isn't that a similar kind of thing? Thanks for the question, Mark. Mark's been a long time subscriber. Uh, Ethan, thanks for the super chat. Comparison bids between North American cities and Europeans seem to do well. Like the bid comparing fake London to Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's it's hard, it's hard to make a video like that just using like Google Earth the way I do. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm trying to actually make more videos. Oh, like, you may have noticed, like I make more videos now where I actually go on location and actually walk around. I mean, number one, walk around and experience things and see them firsthand, but also be able to take footage that I can use in videos. Um, so I'd like to build it. I mean, I, I like doing the Google Earth stuff too, but at a certain point, um, yeah, yeah, you have to be on the ground and see it for yourself and know what you're talking about. Um, there's a lot of chats here, and that's good. I've got 845 people on here, um, so I'm not catching everything. So sorry, if you're asking a really good question, I just miss it. That's, um, it's not intentional. What do I think about BART? It's fine, I don't know. BART is fine. 
that is, is just it's the same thing. I just don't have like super strong opinions on like the shortcomings of trans. A lot of times, I'm just happy there there's trans at all at all in, in a lot of these cities, which is maybe kind of a defeatist attitude, but whatever. Um, and so, okay, let's jump back and do another one. I do like the questions. Um, and what did I get at? So yeah, Fern gave me San Francisco. So let's do number five, starting it now. Now. People are saying Boston. Andrews, that's right, five is Toronto, which is not surprising. Um, well, actually, maybe I'm surprised it isn't higher. Uh, just because, and I think, well, I think partially because people like Jason and Reese, who have connections to Ontario, um, are really, you know, they really got this kind of YouTube niche started before I came along. And I kind of feel like there are a lot of, there's a lot of built in potential viewership in Toronto and the, what is it, the greater Toronto area or the Golden Horseshoe or whatever, whatever we call it. Um, that, was, that was already there. Um, that was probably open to the kind of content I'm making, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, Fern has kind of taken over Toronto. That's, that's true. Um, okay. Is your sense of humor offline quite as dry as via video? I don't know. I mean, I am, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good question. Um, it's just, it, depend, it depends on the context. Um, I do have a dry sense of humor. I, I do play it up in the videos. Um, you know, I write it to, I don't know. I, I, I recognize what people are kind of responding to and I play up that aspect of my personality, I guess. But I could be really boring too. I mean, I am boring, but boring in a dry humorous way. Um, deep dive on Boise. I kind of, I kind of give it to Boise in a couple of my videos and I kind of feel bad about it. It's just, it's not that different from other Western cities in terms of like the way it's laid out. It's kind of like Vegas and it's kind of like Salt Lake and it's kind of like Phoenix in the way that it's flat and just got this grid of strodes and the neighborhoods are kind of disconnected suburban, like even the ones that are inside the city. But I do like the climate. The climate is good. The vibe is okay. Um, the quote unquote urbanism, like the downtown is nice, I think. Um, I don't know, I'd go back to Boise and, and maybe visit. There's, there's so many cities I want to visit and um, my brother was born in Boise and literally a day later we moved to Ashland, Oregon. I think it's probably a good move. Just be slightly concerned about the wildfires, but I love the Rogue Valley actually. Um, Ironic that Vegas and Macau have completely opposite characteristics as cities other than gambling. It's interesting. Thoughts on Bend, Oregon? I love Bend. I love Central Oregon. Um, if you know Sun River, um, it's a place I've gone many times to just like chill out for like a week or so. Um, but yeah, I love the climate and the, the beer culture there is crazy. Um, where will you live after Vegas? I'm not talking about future plans. I might stick around here. I don't know. Have I visited the Bay Area? Yeah, I've visited the Bay Area. Um, Brit should love your channel based on your humor with a U. <laughs> I love that. Um, <laughs> they should. Hey, I don't know why. Yeah, it seems like I've got more. If, if we did the per capita thing, I think Australia is stronger than the UK on viewership. I don't know why that is. Like, is it a time difference? There shouldn't, time difference shouldn't have anything to do with it. I don't know. Tommy, hello, I'm making burgers. Do you want one? Nah, okay. Would I ever cover San Diego? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I got to LA this year. Like, 
primarily to do video stuff, just because it's super, super easy to fly to, and so is San Diego. Um, so we'll see. There, there's just, I've just got a whole lot of cities I want to go to um, and, and do content on. I mean, I'm just, like, I don't know how I came up with the handle city nerd for this channel, but it's kind of accurate. I mean, I just, I just like aspects of pretty much all cities, except Boise. No, Boise is good too. Um, are we ready for, oh, we did Toronto, right? Let's go number four. Number four. It's occurred to me that, yeah, there are a couple pretty important Yeah, Kurt, Newt, Newt Thompson is Seattle. We got Seattle here. Thank you for the super chat trademark. How would you recommend a non-planner to submit ideas slash plans to improve their city and have it actually taken seriously? Well, I don't think you can submit plans. You can definitely submit ideas. I mean, planners, do plan. and it depends what you mean by plan, I guess. Um, these are good. Plan. I would love to do more content along these lines. It's just hard to. It's hard to do that kind of content in the in kind of the style I've developed. Um, the people I know who have had a strong impact on um, city planning. It's a lot of persistence. Um, you have to. You have to get to know planning staff. I think you have to um, you have to find a way to get meetings with planning staff. I mean, ultimately, elected officials have to listen to your ideas. But I don't think you can. It's hard to go straight to that. I think you need advocates that are on staff that get in the ears of like the bureau director. That get in the ears of elected officials. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's. Yeah, it's too conservative of an approach, but that's what I've seen work. I've seen things like parking reform and with persistence over time, like several years. And I don't know. Yeah, just thinking about it. like several years is too long for like a lot of the stuff we have to deal with on climate change, unfortunately. So I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's not the greatest answer, but I think that's. For me, that's kind of the answer right now. Uh, so, build advocacy groups and attend meetings. Advocacy groups, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, if it's just one person, you're probably not gonna get very far. But if, if you've got like kind of, especially if you've got a diverse, like multiple income levels, racially diverse, if you've got a group that re represents kind of a wide swath of the constituency, that's that's a winner. <laughs> but NBA story, I want, see, I, I want to do so much more sports content on here, and I know that like 80% of you are not into it. What NBA storylines are intrigued, intrigued by, are you intrigued by this season? Um, I think the Lakers are funny. Um, I shared this on like, I don't know, probably Twitter or whatever. I'm intrigued by uh, the the battle for lottery position to get Victor Wimbanyama um, in the draft next year. I got to see him down here in Henderson. Um, he played against our G League team and never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it. The guy is just incredible. Um, yeah, the Lakers are not great. Phillies are, you know, I can't root for the Astros. I just, I'm a Mariners fan. Um, that was brutal. You know, they they were leading game one uh, with two outs and two strikes in the ninth inning and lost. They were leading game two in the sixth inning, I think. And then game three went 18 innings. They got swept, but they gave the Astros such a battle. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. There, there's still, there's still people. I don't know. I just maybe there's more cheating, and the Astros are just the ones that get caught. But they got caught, and it's just not good. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop talking about sports because that's boring for a great many of you, I'm sure. Uh, but lots of questions. 
Oh, so we're on number three, right? So let's just go with number three. Yeah, Joshua, it is LA. Number three is LA. This is easy now. There's no, the one thing, like Boston didn't show up in the top 20. What's up, Boston? I don't know. They didn't like that I compared them to Philadelphia in the last video. I don't know. This is life of the channel, though. Maybe they knew that. Maybe they could just sense that I was going to, I was going to drag them. I don't know. Boston's a good city. I just, I don't know. I'm always shocked, like, why is Philadelphia so affordable? Oh, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what the reasons are for that. Like, it doesn't have as many high-tech jobs or something. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, and I realize I'm talking quiet, probably. Okay, so let's go to number two. Two is Chicago. Is that surprising? I don't know. Probably not. And one is... One is New York. Yeah, so where does Boston show? Let's see if I have this thing open. Boston was 22, actually. So Boston's smaller city proper, right? I, I don't know what the population of Boston is. Was it like half a million? Something like that. So it's smaller than like Austin, right? Um, but still. Um, and the viewership in New York borderline doubles up on what it is in Chicago, so probably not surprising. Um, so there you go. S yeah, Boston is around 600K, Metro much larger, exactly. Again, this is city's proper, so. It'd be cool if they did it by metro area. Like I could probably like go through and aggregate all the suburbs together. I don't care that much, obviously. You guys probably don't either. Um, somebody asked where Pittsburgh is. It was lower than I wanted it to be. Pittsburgh is 35. I'll just tell you the next 10, all right? I'm gonna tell you the next 10, all right? 21, because it was 20 was Sydney, right? Here's the next 10. 21, Minneapolis. All right, they don't count Twin Cities. St. Paul's probably some more in there. Uh, Minneapolis is 21. 22, Boston. 23, Vancouver. Mm, kind of wish that was higher, but again, city proper. I don't know. 24 is Ottawa, actually. That's higher than I would have thought. 25 is San Jose. <laughs> Sorry, I made that face. I like San Jose, sort of. It's just not worth the price. Uh, 26 is Phoenix, which is fun. 27, Columbus. 28, I saw a lot of guesses of this. Um, Calgary. So Canada's pretty well represented, actually. That's not surprising. Um, well, let me just give it the last two. Oh, this is interesting, actually. 29 is Charlotte, North Carolina. 30 is Berlin, Berlin, Germany. Um, so that's the only one in the top 30 that is not a primarily English-speaking city, right? Unless, I don't know, is Montreal? Montreal's probably primarily French, is that right? Someone told me, set me, set me straight here. Is Montreal primarily French-speaking? I'm sure people know that. Um, I'm going to try to cut this at one. I could cut it even sooner if it's super boring, but I'm actually kind of having fun. Um, I'm out of list. If you want me to look up a particular city, I can. I've got 500 of them in my sortable spreadsheet. Um, but I want good questions, too. And again, sorry if I've missed any. Dave. Thanks for the super chat. The top five cities you want to visit but haven't. I mean, I'm kind of, it's a good question. Cities that I've just never visited, period. Okay. Any in the US. Um, 
don't know if I want to answer this because it might have spoilers in it. Um, mm -hmm. I'll tell you five that I kind of want to, like I'm, I'm actually going to try to get out and go to a few cities next year. I'm going to give you five cities that I want to try to visit next year. Um, but it depends on like how much it costs and what time of year it is. Um, and I, I haven't like preconceived this. I'm just kind of thinking off the top of my head right now. So these are cities that I've either never been to or I just haven't been since like I started, either I started thinking, started doing this channel or um, I started getting into city planning and things like that. So I would say Philadelphia, Chicago, and that shouldn't be surprising, you know, those were my top two undervalued, right? Um, Part of this is like, there are cities I want to go to, but I have been there, but I want to go back to do video on them. Mm, I want to go somewhere in Texas, and I think I want to go to Houston. I want to go to Florida. And I think that might be Orlando, but it could be Miami. Um, now let me give you one more. And these are all, like I've been to these cities, um, but I haven't been, I haven't looked at them through kind of the lens I'm using right now. So I gotta give you one more, oh, because uh, I went to Mexico last year, I did go to Mexico City and that was great. I really want to go to Guadalajara, but I'm not going to give you that one. Um, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Vancouver. And I have been there pretty recently, but I think um, it's such a it's such an interesting North American city in so many ways, and there's so much we can be learning that translates well to other cities. Um, and obviously, you can go to you can go to cities in like the Netherlands or Denmark or Spain or whatever, and I learned a lot there too, but it doesn't always translate as well because the cities are so much older and so they er, use the word urban, the term urban fabric here, but they're set up so differently in terms of how the streets are laid out and how wide the streets are. And um, whereas Vancouver is of a similar vintage to a lot of US cities that can learn a lot from it. Um, I know I kind of put Vancouver up on a pedestal on this channel a whole bit, I just think it's deserved. I think, I think it's an incredible city. Um, come to San Juan and see our awful excuse for a train. I've been on the, was it a train Urbano? Yeah, I was in San Juan, when was this? Probably like seven years ago, something like that. I love Puerto Rico. Um, and like the stuff that's happened with like the power grid and the hurricanes, it just sucks really bad. And I know there's a lot of, um, there's poverty there, but there's also, there's also great stuff there. It's beautiful. I love the food. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot to like there. I would definitely go back. Um, yeah, I don't know how well, <laughs> how well the train is planned, um, but I mean, it's sort of useful. I just wish it came all the way down to old San Juan um, and through a, uh, Santurce. Uh, what's my favorite, most ludicrous strode? Um, I don't know. That's that's something I would, uh, I don't know. I have to say, so I've done like three videos on strodes. I've only done three, I think. Um, and they've all been, they've all done well on viewership. So it's a well I can kind of go back to, but I kind of feel dumb doing it because I just feel like I'm going to be saying the same things over and over, but I don't know. Maybe that's what people want. No, not really. I, I can always put a different spin. Like, every, every place is different. They all have different characteristics. Do I have any favorite small cities? I don't know. People were asking me about, like, Bend, and somebody mentioned the Rogue Valley earlier. I mean, I spent my whole life in the Pacific Northwest, and I actually worked with a lot of smaller 
cities up there, just doing like planning consulting and stuff. So even though I live in, or lived in Portland, um, I ended up doing a lot of my work in smaller cities around Portland. I love, uh, I mentioned Bend, I mentioned the Rogue Valley. I like um, you know, Ashland and Jacksonville down there are phenomenal. Um, and then on the coast, there are lots of great places on the coast. Um, I love Astoria, Oregon. I think it's magical. Um, and that's why it's been used in movies several times. It's just incredible. Um, what else have we got? Oh, and Hood River also. Hood River, Oregon. Beautiful. Um, Astoria is Little Portland. Astoria is what should have been. I don't know. Why, why isn't Astoria like San Francisco? It's like a question I've asked myself before. Or why isn't it Seattle? Like, is the weather that terrible? I'm not sure. Do you feel like American YouTubers fetishize European cities and planning too much? I'm asking as someone from Europe, and I, th I think the answer is yes. I love that question. I, uh, do I use air quotes too much? I love air quotes. Um, I, I can see that criticism. It's not just YouTubers. Like, if you go to planning school and you take, you know, you take courses in, especially if you take courses in, like, bike pit planning and stuff, you will talk about, like, Amsterdam and Copenhagen, like, half the time. So it's not just YouTube channels. It's what, it's what you actually... If, if, you, if you do it as a profession, you're exposed to that and you, you adopt that view. And not only that, like, I know just, just from being in Portland, like, they would constantly have, um, like, field trips with, like, city officials and planning and engineering staff and academics. Like, they'd get a big group and they'd all go to, like, Delft or Amster Amsterdam or whatever, and they'd come back with a bunch of inspiring ideas, and then, like, 1% of it ever gets implemented. I don't know, it's kind of a cynical view, but, um, I don't know. I, I think it's understandable. I think, I think there's a lot to learn. That kind of goes back to what I said about Vancouver. I think a lot of the lessons are harder from, from cities that were constructed, you know, centuries ago are harder to apply. And, and I realize Amsterdam, um, a lot of that work was done more recently. Like that used to be a car choked city. So th there's a lot to learn there. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't overly criticize like YouTubers or whoever who play up and it's not just bikes, right? That's the prime, prime example. Like it's a, it's a constant stream of videos telling you how great it is over there um, compared to here. And if you don't like that, don't watch it. But I don't think it's untrue. I think um, if you haven't thought about it before or you haven't seen it, it's probably it's probably kind of mind blowing to see that YouTube channel and learn about um, what those differences are. If you've been to Amsterdam, you've already seen it. Maybe it's not that interesting, but but I think for probably most viewers, it's it's a it's kind of a revelation. Edward, Las Vegas native and current Seattle resident, I love your content. Sometimes it feels tailor made for me. I was hoping that would be a question, but thanks for the super chat. Um, yeah, I'm a Seattle native and a current Las Vegas re resident, so. Oh, what? Okay, I'll comment about loved Las Vegas biking, hate Seattle biking. That's interesting um, because there's, I think there's a lot more biking per capita in Seattle. There's better infrastructure in Seattle. Seattle does have way more hills, um, but it depends where you are in Seattle too. So I didn't bike that much in Seattle when I lived there. I biked all the time in Portland when I lived there because there are certain parts of Portland that are just, and they've done a lot of work, but there's a build for it. Um, Connor, thank you for the super chat. Thanks everybody for the super chats. I don't know if I've seen all of them. This stuff is 
moving by quickly. Thoughts on unique slash bespoke trains at like Pittsburgh's inclines. Why aren't small but useful projects like these more common? Uh, I don't know. That's another good like Reese question. I don't know. I mean, I have opinions on that. I think things like the inclines or like gondolas are very, very specific to very particular topographies. Um, so, I don't know. Like Pittsburgh has particular things going on on like the west side of the river there, um, as far as like the the changes in elevation and stuff. Like, would you build a new funicular today? Probably not. I don't know. Um, anyway, that's why I think they're not more common because they're just very particular to certain geographies. Um, but you will see, like, they've opened the cable bus or cable boost or however they pronounce it um, in Mexico City fairly recently. Um, so yeah, it just it's, it depends on the city. Do, do, do. All right, we're hitting one o'clock now, so I'll probably jump off soon, but I just wanna make sure I, thanks for the super chat. Is that Yanni, Lani? Lani, um, with a smiley face, that's good. Furnicular, good. Thoughts on Hyperloop? Uh, I don't even wanna give it oxygen. Um, thoughts on Honolulu traffic? Not really. Although, yeah, Honolulu is super interesting from a, I don't know, like a transportation modeling perspective. Just because it's all, like the whole kind of metro area is contained on an island, so. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Well, I do a streetcar video from Redstone Relic. Thanks for the super chat. Um, maybe, maybe at some point. I don't know. I don't hate streetcars as, uh, as much as a lot of people probably do. I mean, I don't know. Probably that's probably an artifact of like having lived in Portland when that streetcar opened and I don't know, it's hard to it's hard to separate the success of the streetcar, which I don't know how successful it is, but from the success of all the land use that developed around it. Um, I don't think it's that it's not an easy analysis to figure out like what caused what, but um, Yeah, I might do a video on it at some point. Brandon, thank you for the super chat. Um, Fern, <laughs> thoughts on Link LRT from a Seattle person. I'm generally glad it's there. You know, I already mentioned that's how I feel about pretty much any rail transit project in the US. But it feels like a bit of a sunk cost to me. It could have been spent on a metro or regional rail. Um, I'm going to say a little more about this. I, I think part of the reason I don't like to get into like detailed critiques of different cities, like rail transit systems is so, so much of the way things are developed is political, which I don't know, often doesn't lead to the outcomes that you would think are optimal. Um, just for example, like a Seattle and Portland comparison, Seattle has been very successful with bond measures. And from what I've seen, they've done that by <clears throat> kind of peanut buttering service around in a kind of suboptimal way, in a way that they probably couldn't have passed a successful bond measure if they had, um, if they had promised kind of a more technically correct set of alignments that responded better to, I don't know, population and employment density. I don't know. Probably worth making a video about. Like, I, I, I don't think I can get into um, kind of as much detail on how, how I feel about that. But contrast Portland, where um, I think they had a couple failed bond measures where they had very specific um, like set Southwest corridor on the bond measure and um, there wasn't enough perceived geographic equity to, to pass the measure. It's like all the investment was going in particular places and you know, you need to get the support of, I don't know, 
it, it's, it's politically tricky. It's just not that easy to get the support to build like an optimal system. It's a really kind of politically complicated thing. So, um, okay. Uh, super chat. Does the common usage of the word highway, and thank you for the super chat, HR or KMS. I don't know what HRK is. I'll have to look. That's a different currency. Instead of free weight, ever bother you, or is it just me? Uh, or expressway or limited access highway. Um, I think they're different things. Like, they're, yeah. Like a freeway is, is like a limited access grade separated with like on and off ramps, right? And a highway can be, um, it can have like traffic signals on it. I don't know. It's, that's not like the fully accurate answer I want to give. But yeah, there is a difference between a highway and a freeway. Like a freeway, I guess you could say it's a subset of highways. Um, having worked in Oregon, have you come across any reasoning for why the state doesn't have any regional rail to speak of? Does it not? It's got the West, the West Side Express that goes between Beaverton and Wilsonville. You don't think that's regional rail? I think that's regional rail. Um, so I don't know what you're talking about. Oregon has perfectly fine regional rail. Um, I don't know. It's something I thought about a lot. Like you could build, you could build like a regional rail or a commuter rail system that goes out to like, I don't know, Scapoose and St. Helens and Sandy and like Canby and up to like, I don't know, even Longview or whatever. But I don't know, what's the ridership on something like that? It'd be really hard to justify the cost. Um, mm, it's hard to, hard to say. I don't know. Like Portland isn't as Portland that it's not that big of a city, right? Like how much how much demand is there for travel between like St. Helens and Portland? It's not that much. Like how many how many trains can you fill a day? Like a third of one, I'm not sure. Uh what kind of bike do you ride? It's a it's a Janus commuter. Um Got it for like five hundred dollars eight years ago or something. Spend like maybe a hundred dollars a year on maintenance. It's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Uh, someone gave me the Croatian kuna equals three point three U.S. dollars. Wow. But when people use highway, when they mean freeway, yeah, that would drive me crazy. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's. I don't know. I, I try not to come down too hard on people, but like. If, yeah, I'm a transportation planner, so I'm kind of used to using very specific words to mean specific things. And I'm also used to like going to public meetings and talking to people who don't use the exact same words I do. And I don't know. I, I, I kind of get, got over being bent out of shape, but uh, it's just just not worth it. Um, but, I, but yeah, it does, <laughs> it does kind of make me cringe a little bit. But I, yeah, I just try not to make a deal out of it. Uh, speaking of Seattle light rail, sorry, I'm just kind of cherry picking things that jump out at me. Speaking of Seattle light rail, what are your thoughts on how park and ride focused the North extensions are? Uh, I do want to do a video on park and rides because I have a lot of opinions. Um, yeah, I'm just not a fan generally. Um, but I'll think about it more before I do a video. I'll do something more nuanced as I try to do, but I just feel like a, a, a rail station is a huge asset. Like it's a huge, it's a huge investment. It's a lot of capital cost and planning to put a station in and it should have dense housing and employment around it, shouldn't it? That, that's what you should put at rail stations. That's it. Um, yeah, not a fan of parking rides. Maybe for like super, the very last station on the line, maybe. Maybe the very last station on the long transit line should have a parking ride. 
depending on where it is. Respond to a question you had about Go Triangle. Provides regional service in Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. I think I eventually figured that out, but probably when I was putting together that video, it was a little confusing to me. Um, but the whole area is kind of, I don't know, I always feel like that should be one metro area, kind of like, like there's a Raleigh Durham airport, right? So why isn't that one metro area? There's a Seattle Tacoma airport, that's one metro area. SeaTac, I don't know. I guess they're too far apart. I know it comes down to like commuting patterns, right? They do it based on actual commuting patterns, I believe. Um, this is still fun. People are hanging, I'll hang for a little longer. Um, sorry this ended up in portrait mode. You know, when I, when I originally tested this, I had it in landscape mode, just like my videos, and it was fine. And then when I went live, the camera said, or the, the app said, um, yeah, you can't, you can't rotate this. It has to be portrait, so, I don't know. I use my, I use my phone to shoot. I just like the lens better. I've got a webcam I could use, and I just, I just kind of hate it. Um, okay. Where did Salt Lake City land on your watch list? That's a good question. 42. Salt Lake City is 42. Thoughts on Japanese transit model, i.e. leveraging private companies with less restrictions versus the public model, which seems to be struggling in the U.S. I don't have strong thoughts on this because I don't know. I'm familiar with the idea, but I just don't know enough about that model of um, what do they do? They, I mean, they they own the the land um, and the, the the air rights and they sell them and that's part of the profitability of the transit operation right someone can correct me i bet people out there know more than i know about it go to whittier alaska every resident lives in the same building urbanism at its peak why is that i don't i don't know that um why do they all live in the same building it's like I don't know, I could, I could guess at it. Company town, is it canning? Is it like fisheries? Um, yeah, it's interesting, when I worked on, I don't wanna name the city, but on the, on the Oregon coast, I worked on a city transportation plan where um, they take a long time and during the process, there was a land use application for a big housing development just for cannery workers um, that it, was, it became a major NIMBY thing like nobody wanted it in their backyard like literally um, well maybe not literally their backyard but, but it was that idea um, found that really interesting like everybody likes canned salmon right but nobody wants to have cannery workers in their backyard hypocrite much Okay, what else we got here? Oh, eh. yeah, so I've had this, well, it's a long story why I have a baseball print back there, but um, yeah, it is Ray Dandridge. Uh, but if you're Alaska, you also have to drive on train tracks in a tunnel for a couple of miles to get there by car too, interesting. I'm so glad you introduced me to the legend that is Tesho Akin Daily. It's funny, I've been aware of Tesha for like probably eight years or something just because I follow MLS and like CONCACAF soccer. And when I started showing up in my Twitter feed with a bunch of urbanism stuff, I just thought it was the coolest thing. Um, overall thoughts on monorails? I don't know. I grew up in Seattle, so... Um, I don't know. I know I'm in Vegas where we have... I don't know. I guess we have one. Meet. We have we have a couple of monorails. I guess. I don't know. They're just. If you're gonna go to the expense of building like a fixed guideway system, 
I don't know, maybe maybe a maybe a monorail's cheaper, I guess. But you know, just just build an elevated train, right? I've I've harped on it in a couple of videos, but Vegas is laid out so perfectly for a high capacity rail line, either below grade or yeah, they should they should cut and cover under the Las Vegas strip. They should totally disrupt the strip for like three years and build a cut and cover ton tunnel. Um, for a high, high capacity transit line from the airport of the strip to downtown. It's, like it's, it's a slam dunk. But the politics are not there, go figure. Mm. Oh, we need the Newell's origin story. Uh, Nah, it's personal. No Newell's origin story. Philly Union or LAFC. You know, I don't follow MLS that closely. I actually follow, like, I don't know. I'm a snob. I follow, like, European soccer more closely. Um, so I don't have a super strong opinion on Philly Union or LAFC. Just, I really don't root for LA. Um, hello from Tristan Shepard and Emma Sager. Hello to you, I would say. Hello. Uh, imagine an alternate timeline in which the Seattle rail system was built out as an expansion of the monorail. Well, yeah, there was an alternate timeline, right? Didn't it pass? No, I forget. It was around the time I moved out of Seattle. I think it actually passed, right? And before that, like a long time before that, what was it, the early 70s? They had forward thrust, which is a weird name for like a ballot measure. Um, but all that money that was on the table from the feds ended up going to Atlanta for MARTA instead because they didn't pass, um, pass their bond measure. Otherwise, there would have been probably a subway, an actual subway in Seattle. But it didn't happen. Everything got way more expensive, and now there's the link, which it's okay. Yeah, forward thrust. It's pretty funny, right? <laughs> Maybe it wasn't as funny back then. I'm not sure. I think people have dirtier minds now. Uh, El Greco. What's your thoughts on the Legacy Streetcars Transit? Maybe do a video on which one is... Yeah, I'm sorry. I am, like, preferring questions from people who, like, donate money. I know that makes me look bad, but just the reality. Uh, maybe do a video on which one is best used by locals. Legacy streetcars transit. Are, really, are there really that many in the U.S.? I mean, like Cleveland, Philadelphia, Toronto, uh, New Orleans. Is that, what, is that what we're talking about? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, things that were good ideas, like, a hundred years ago, aren't the things you would build today. I mean, I'm kind of sorry that, like, all the, the red cars are gone in L.A. And I did that video about kind of what they left behind as far as land use. Um, so, yeah, I do have mixed feelings about it. It is an interesting question, actually. Um, so, yeah, maybe that's something I'll think more about. It's something I actually kind of wanted to do in other cities. I, I really enjoyed researching um, uh, the Pacific Electric and the, the LA Railway prior to going to LA and then kind of exploring the areas and looking at the street designs where the streetcars ran and just kind of thinking about how, something I've actually thought about for a really long time, just like how that impacted the way cities are laid out and what are walkable areas and what aren't walkable areas and what I don't know, just kind of what that, what that means, um, even thinking forward, like is it a rationale for building streetcars today? I don't know, maybe not, um, but there's no doubt that it's, um, it's really important in the way our cities um, in the U.S. Uh, took shape and then kind of, uh, kind of unraveled um, later on. It's kind of sad, but but.
kind of the phantom limb of all that stuff is still out there, and I found that really interesting. Uh, Simon says, one of our downtown streetcar lines moves 80,000 people per day. Yeah, Toronto. It's Toronto, right, Simon? Um, yeah, that's, that's probably the North American city where they're still getting the most utility out of legacy streetcar lines, right? So maybe that's something I would have to come to Toronto to talk about, but I'm sure Reese does plenty of content on that. But it is interesting to me, for sure. Um, I do, I do, uh, <laughs> I do kind of intentionally, when I think about like what kind of videos I do on my channel, and this is from the very beginning, like I'm, I'm aware of what Reese does on his channel and what Jason does and what, uh, what Alan Fisher does on his channel and I don't know like I'm gonna kind of do what I want to do and be myself but but I definitely I don't know I definitely am aware of not wanting to do something other people are already doing because it's boring um, so and I love all those channels too those are those are good folks too um, I already talked about gondolas a little bit. Dodger Stadium, because I did walk around that Echo Park area by Dodger Stadium. There are a bunch of anti-gondola signs out there. Plan Dodger Stadium gondola has 500 per hour. And to me, this seems low versus a train. It is low. I just don't know what you can do. Can you run a train to Dodger Stadium? I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can. I don't, I don't know about the... The topography and the grade changes. Urbanist YouTube convention when? That's a great question. I you thought about that. Um, it's funny, when I started this channel, and I'm probably going to cut this. Good. I see I've slowly got subscribers dropping off because nobody wants to hang out with me for like an hour and a half, and mm, my feelings are hurt, but, but I also get it. Um, yeah, when, when I started this, yeah, you know, I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what, but like Reese and Alan probably had 50,000 subscribers then, something like that. I was aware of them. And Jason probably had a couple hundred thousand. Um, they're all bigger. And it's it's interesting. I do feel like we all, I don't know, I, just, I don't know if any of us really feels like it's a competitive thing at all. I, I think we all feel like it's a it's it's a community that we all help grow in different ways. So we all communicate with each other. Um, I won't say more about that. That's that's their business. But I think the idea of figuring out how to I don't know have a I'm not into <laughs> sorry I'm kind of rambling a little, a little bit a little bit of a train of thought issue here. Um, yeah, I, you'll notice I haven't done any collaboration videos. I thought about it. Just, I don't know, I like working by myself. Um, but I'd definitely be open to the idea of figuring out how to have some sort of event with some of the other channels. And there are a lot more than like the ones I just mentioned. There are a lot of good channels out there and people who, what's really interesting to me is like, we aren't all like super experts. Like I'm not someone with like 40 years of experience in planning or whatever. Um, we aren't all like super technical or policy experts, but we're definitely all people who have like a huge passion for what we're talking about and put a ton of time into it. And, and, uh, and I think that's what really I think that's what people respond to. Um, so yeah, I can see the idea of having some sort of event would be interesting to kind of bring together people who have that passion um, or care a lot about those same things. Urbanism of fictional cities. I've actually thought about this. Thanks for the super chat, Andres. Um, LA and her, Gotham City and the Batman, Cyberpunk's Night City, etc. Uh, I think I actually have, I do keep a video idea list that is way too long and needs refinement. 
And I think I actually have something like that on my video idea list. I have a few, I have some things that are out there that I think are just too out there for people, and that's probably one of them. Plus the other thing with that, with making a video, like, I don't know, you run into like copyright issues. If, I mean, maybe it's fair use. I just don't like to mess with it that much, like using like clips from Hollywood movies or, or whatever. Um, yeah, I just don't know what to say about thoughts on it. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a movie buff and, um, the way, the way cities are presented in film is interesting and, um, fictional cities, uh, are interesting as well. I mean, think about like Blade Runner or like Inception or... I don't know. I actually think, oh, well, yeah, I could, I could actually go on at length about this. Um, I, th I think the, the, the choices about how to present a city and what you would want in a fictional city are super interesting, and film directors and writers do think a lot about that, and what you're seeing is never by accident. Um, so it is really interesting. I have not seen Rod Steiger's hands over the city. I'm interested in hearing about that. Uh, thanks for the super chat, Katie. Press with the alternate New York. I haven't seen the Doctor Strange multiverse of madness. I... <laughs> Let's talk about Marvel for a second. Um, in an earlier life, I was definitely a comic book collector. So, um, and Marvel specifically, and always felt like, wow, somebody should be making movies of these. But I think, not that I'm like brilliant for thinking that, I just think the technology wasn't there. Like you need, you needed, uh, you needed motion capture and CGI that didn't really, wasn't really available until I don't know when, like Jurassic Park maybe, or I don't know, whatever it was. So like what were the original, like Spider-Man and like the X-Men movies of like around 2000 or so were probably the first really successful Marvel movies. Um, and those weren't even done under the Marvel brand, right? So it's not surprising to me that those end up being successful. Um, anyway. But again, I think, yeah, the way cities are presented, like those are, like those always take place in cities, almost always, right? Like, like the Avengers movies, like they're always destroying like Manhattan or something like that. Um, or actually um, the way, the way they're presented in the, I don't know, I think they, they ended up canceling like all the Netflix Marvel series, but like if you go back and watch the first Daredevil series, like the way Hell's Kitchen is presented in that is, is really interesting to me. Um, all right okay i'm gonna cut this in about 10 minutes how about that and so we'll do like 10 more minutes of q a anybody have any other questions about like cities that were nash or nashville is number 40 st louis is number 41 on my um top cities of viewership origin uh i'll give you a few interesting okay edmonton 32 Amsterdam, 36, Amsterdam, Brisbane, 39. These are just like super interesting ones. Um, Oakland, 47, Dublin, 48. Interesting. Stockholm, 54, Singapore. Now that surprises me. All the uh, English is widely spoken in Singapore, right? So maybe it's not that surprising, but Singapore is the number 56. Mississauga is 59, actually. Rotterdam, 60. Paris, 63. So, like, how far do I have to go? Like, where, like, I didn't even, like, oh, Jersey City, 70. Zurich, 71. Like, where do I, have, like, kind of the largest city, right? What is the largest city proper? Is it Tokyo or is it, like, Shanghai or something? Like, Tokyo isn't even in the top 500 here. Like, a like whatever I'm talking about in whatever language I'm doing, it just doesn't register there. So it's very hard, yeah. Like there's just no, 
other than Singapore. Like I've got no Asian cities on here. Um, more questions. With all the data you've gathered, you could do a ranking of cities based on a big amount of specific factors. That's kind of what I do, right? Especially with these like affordable cities or overrated, underrated cities. I'm kind of, I don't know. It took me a while to get there because I like to, I like to document like the sources I'm using and the calculations I'm doing so people can see what I'm doing. But some of these end up being kind of black boxy just because I don't want to explain everything. And some of it is kind of subjective. So I don't know. But yeah, I do have like a lot of like old kind of databases that I, um, I bring together to do like, I don't know. I don't want to really talk about much about how I do it because it's boring. But um, yeah, like lookup tables or whatever to figure out. Um, uh, if you could live anywhere outside the U.S., where would you go? That's a good question, and I changed my mind on that a lot. Um, I don't know. Like Mexico City is kind of a popular response to that right now. And I also know that, I don't know, there are definitely expat enclaves in Mexico City that are probably super annoying to the local population. So and it's something I would have to think about, right? Because, I don't know, it, it, makes, it makes sense from like a geographic arbitrage perspective of um, your money goes farther there. Well, yeah, but I don't know. How does that, how does that play with I don't know, like the established local neighborhood. It's in people who actually live there and aren't taking advantage of geographic arbitrage. I don't know. I do think you have to think about that. Um, so it's not that easy. It's not as easy as just going somewhere where it's cheap to live and you get a lot of amenities. Um, do, 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 do. Keep telling us a bit about the black box. I do try. I spent a lot of time in this last video. Last week's video, was probably, well, it's probably because I talked about like the election or whatever, but it took me like seven and a half minutes to get into a top 10 list, which is way, way more than I want to do. But it's always a balance between, like I kind of want to get there, so I'm not being too boring, but I also, I, I want to give you enough to, to like chew on or think about or, or understand too. And plus it gives me a chance to just talk about more philosophical ideas about what's important and why and how, how important it is. Uh, oh, what's your favorite YouTube content not related to your content? I like that question. 39 Thacker. Um, probably, I do like travel YouTube. And part of what I do is a little bit like that, but they're definitely YouTubers who I follow who are, um, like expats in like different countries that I'm interested in. Um, I find those are always really interesting to watch just to get like the flavor, like local flavor from somebody who you can kind of identify with it because they're all also American. Um, but local flavor and then also like tips on like where to go and like what, we, what you would have to do if you actually wanted to expatriate to a place or whatever. Not that I'm thinking about doing that, but I always find that interesting. Expats everywhere is good for Portugal. Expats everywhere is good for a lot of things, right? I don't know. Uh, what do you think about is the biggest misconception about being a professional planner? I don't know. I kind of made a video about that, but didn't get that many views. Um, I guess it wasn't specifically about that. I don't know. Like probably what you think you're gonna be doing when you go to planning school compared to what you end up doing. I don't know, like maybe you, I don't know, I don't know what people think you're gonna be doing when they go to planning school. Um, but you, you do end up doing a lot more like process than you do like doing maps or renderings or whatever. Um, and process can be kind of boring and fr frustrating and Maybe there's too much of it. I don't know. That's like a whole other conversation. Uh, 
And Common, do you feel like you're making a change in the world due to how many subscribers you have now? Or do you aim for a higher subscriber goal to get that feeling? Yeah, it's not categorical, right? I, I definitely have, um, I don't know, I don't want to overstate it, but, but I do get, um, I get comments from people and I actually um, increasingly uh, run into people in person um, who, who kind of let me know that, boy, I never really thought about some of these things before I started watching your channel. And um, that's great feedback. It's, it's, I like hearing that. Um, so is, is that the same as making a change in the world? I don't know, it's, it's very incremental, right? But I think, you know, again, like all of our channels, like all the, not just the YouTubers, like, but like people on Twitter too, like there are different people in this kind of urbanist space who have, have a profile of a certain sort and um, it's definitely different from what it was a couple of years ago, I would say. There's a, it's, a, it's a little bit more defined community than it was. In fact, I think, is this something I talked about in that video a couple of weeks ago? Like, I hadn't really, I don't think I had heard the word urbanism. I guess I'd heard the word before, but it didn't strike me as being, like, a movement or... Like it, uh, or or is having like a strong definition, like at any time in my planning career until I kind of got into this, and started to understand the people in this community and what they care about and how they use that word, and I don't know. Like I don't know how well that's understood in like the planning profession. I think it's somewhat understood, um, and things have changed a lot. I think there's there's more. Uh, political energy and advocacy in this space now than, than there has been, I think. Um, I'm not sure what to credit that to. It's not, it's not about YouTubers, I don't think. Um, it's an interesting question. Like why, why, is, why is this a higher profile thing now than it has been? And I think part of it's political, like, and part of it has to do with I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts about this, actually. It has to do with um, housing affordability, probably, more than anything else. Um, people want to live places where they can walk and bike and take transit to do the things they want to do in everyday life. And they see that those places exist, and most of those places are not affordable. Um, that's, I think that's, that's the source of a lot of the energy behind this. It's not, a, it's not a tenable situation. Um, yeah, I don't have, I don't have a quick answer to that, but I think that's, uh, I think that's, that's kind of like the framework for what all this is. Ray, my first and second round NBA fantasy picks are entered. Who should I pick up that's going to go off this weekend? I used to be way into fantasy sports. Sorry, I'm going to go back to sports really quick. I used to be way, way into fantasy sports. Um, I don't even want to tell you how much I was. No, well, not that much. Like, I didn't have that many teens or whatever, but I took it really seriously. Like, I, I liked winning a lot, and I analyzed the hell out of uh, baseball, baseball and football mostly, even though basketball is my favorite sport. I never got that into fantasy basketball. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if it's going to go off this weekend. Um, yeah, I just don't really look at things from a fan fantasy perspective that much anymore. Just because I'm not really into it. Um, Grab Pascal Siakam if he's available. Yeah, maybe. Toronto's pretty good this year. Um, I like Siakam. Uh... Okay. 
There are way too many sports questions on here. If, oh, sorry, I lost it. <laughs> if, if you went to New York City, would you rather see the new Bob Moses play on Broadway, straight line crazy, or watch some sports ball? I would, I would like, I don't know, I like going to plays. Um, and I've, I don't know, I've gone to like Yankees and Mets games, and those are fun too, but you can do that whenever. Um, yeah, that play looks pretty good, and I do want to see it. So we'll see. I tend to get to New York like once a year, probably, um, for whatever reason. So I'll look and see. Like, I don't know when that's going to happen again. Sometime next year. Uh, okay, I'm probably close to cutting this. Like, if I see too many sports questions, that kind of tells me it's time to cut this. But see, okay, I'm just going to read this question now. I think I have a response to it. Anthony Hind. If you were to attend a city council, meeting and want to tell them to build more bike paths, safer bike infrastructure, and safer streets for kids, what would you say? That's, yeah, it, like I don't even have a response to that because I just, uh, I, th I think, I think you need more organization. Like when when you when you want to go testify to city council, um, I mean any any testimony is good, but what's really effective is having a group of people with coordinated messages, and it's even better if you've already gotten in the ear of planners or better yet elected officials, who are going to know, know what's coming and are on board with it. Like maybe not the whole city council, but at least like one counselor. I don't know. Stuff like that just means a lot, a lot more if you've kind of prepped it and laid the groundwork for it and you don't just spring it on them. Um, I don't know. Politics is weird, right? It's kind of, it's, it's reality. Um, but yeah, you, you have to think strategically about that. Um, land value tax. I haven't done anything on land value tax. And I, I, I do, um, I'm not necessarily an economics person, but you know, I, I've got some, I've got what whatever background or education in economics you need to be a planner is what I have. But I went into like transportation planning. Some people went into like economic development planning or, or whatever who are better on that stuff. But I probably will talk about land value tax and related issues in, in an upcoming video. I just, I don't have it scheduled yet. Land value tax would fix this. Isn't that what they all say? Is there anything that land value tax wouldn't fix? That's, that's the real question. No, I don't know. I, I don't have like super strong feelings about it. I know when I learned about land value tax, it was one of those things that just seems so obvious. Um, so, Yes, good, good question. We're very close to North Korea's <laughs> Rengrado First and May Stadium, 114,000 capacity. I thought it had like 150,000. Did I read that? Like, how do you know? Like, are they gonna tell you? Like, has anyone actually seen Rengrado First of May Stadium? Can anyone confirm that it actually exists? Because I'm not gonna just take it at face value. Besides, is that that much? That would still be bigger than like, I think, like, the biggest stadium I can do a good aerial of is, is Michigan. Um, I could be wrong, though. Not to spoil it, but I still have my list of stadiums I'm working through. I'm not quite there yet. Oh, man. Simon, it would be cool if you deconstructed the different urban fabrics. Don't y'all love that term, urban fabric? I can't, I can't stop saying it. It's just... It just says what I want to say. And at the same time, it just doesn't really mean anything um, of a city in terms of what era it was constructed. I mean, you can do that. I, the one thing I don't have is, um, like I don't do anything I'm doing with GIS, like geographic information systems, where you actually could bring in geographic, uh, like shape files or whatever. I don't, 
by using terms that everybody doesn't is everybody's familiar with. But you can bring in data in, in a geographic format where you can look at like tax lots and what you what year a structure was built and stuff, and you can analyze it all in like kind of the way you would with a database, but it's also got a geographic. That would be like super interesting to do with that. I just don't have GIS. Um, I mean, I know I can get it. There, there's there's open source stuff you can use. I just I just don't always see the value in it. It just seems like it might be a lot more work than than it's worth. But it's something I could look at. Um, Rangrado was remodeled in 2014, and it is suspected. <laughs> That the capacity is closer to 114k. Uh, QGIS is goaded. That's probably what I would go with, right? QGIS. Um, yeah, yeah. All my all my experiences with ArcGIS, which it's funny if you're a planner, like kind of kind of the the conventional wisdom is you want to get as far away from GIS as soon as you possibly. Can. otherwise you'll just be stuck doing GIS. Like if you, um, if you reveal yourself to be too good at GIS, then that's all you'll ever do for the, re for the rest of your career and nobody wants that. I know like GIS, it's, it's kind of fun. Just don't have too much fun with it because you'll get pigeonholed in your career. Um, please roast Ottawa, Ontario. I might, I might. I was just thinking of, Simon always has good questions, sorry, I had to jump on that. I was thinking of just selecting some samples and looking at them firsthand in a good old-fashioned compare contrast. Okay, yeah, that's kind of more up the alley of what I would do. I'm still thinking about like where to go with that. So, like you might have noticed or not, but I do, I do put some effort into like constructing a, like a narrative for whatever video I'm doing. I just want to make sure there's like a point to it and like a, Kind of like a beginning, middle, and end. Like it's super easy with a top ten list. Like talk about the criteria, count on the list, get to number one. It's kind of got its own built-in narrative logic to it. Everything else that I make, like I have to figure out, okay, what order do I talk about things in for kind of the most impact, um, and how does it how does it tell a story and have a point at the end? So I'd have to figure out how to do that. Do a video on Coruscant, the ultimate urbanist goal. I'm just gonna pretend that doesn't exist. I mean, it was, no, it was never in the original trilogy, right? They added it, they added Coruscant footage to Return of the Jedi when they reissued it. They did like some CGI stuff. I'm just not really a fan. Just not really a fan. I don't know, is it more urbanist? I know you're joking, by the way. Um, but like compare contrast, Coruscant and like Wakanda. That would be cool. Again, like, I'd be worried about the copyright issues. People don't ask me Phillies or Astros. Like, I, I, I can't even figure out who, who roots for the Astros. I'm sure there are people in Houston who are into it. I mean, obviously there are, but man, just can't do it. Can't do it. Thoughts on Columbus, Ohio? Probably bad, like me. Not necessarily. I mean, I love the I don't know, like the design of the, like, you can always tell from an aerial, like the way a freeway system is designed. Like if there's a central loop around the downtown, the, and that's kind of what Columbus, Columbus has that. Um, so I kind of hate that, but there are other things too, right? I mean, anytime you've got a huge state university in your city, you're going to have some, um, yeah, you're going to have a lot of transit dependent people. You're going to have, you're going to have, people who depend on walking. So you're going to have a built-in constituency that supports like a, at least a certain level of urbanism. So I can never, I can never hate on like a city on like Columbus that much. Um, so, and there's more to it than the Ohio State University, right? I mean, there's some, there's some cool districts there and stuff. You and the others should start a pack. I'd donate. We are ham. I know I said I'd cut this earlier, but it looks like I still have a decent number of viewers here, and the questions keep being interesting. Um, yeah. I've, I've actually thought more and more about the political aspect of this, um, and so I appreciate that comment. I'm quite sure where to go with it. Like, I don't know if everybody is as overtly interested in politics 
as I am. Um, I just think, uh, I don't know, I think there's a lot there to chew on. Thoughts on, if you want to ask me thoughts on different cities, yeah, I'm probably just not going to go into that, because I'm probably just going to cut this. Best NCAA conference by College Town Transit, that'd be interesting. That's kind of sportsy, though. No thoughts on Pahrump, Nevada, I have no opinion. Would you collaborate with City Beautiful or Road Guy Rob or Wendover? Eh, probably not. I like all of those, they're fine. I like Road Guy Rob, I don't know. I think, uh, a lot of my background, like a lot of the work I've done in my fresh locker is like literal traffic engineering of the kind that you would all just hate. Um, and I kind of hated too, but I find it like super interesting at the same time. All right, that's it. I am going to cut it. Uh, so sorry for the portrait format. This didn't go off quite the way I wanted to, but you guys were fun. Um, the questions were good. And, um, yeah, thanks to everybody for helping get to 100K. In a way, it's just kind of like an arbitrary number. It doesn't really matter. But they do send you like a little silver plaque thing. So when I get that, I'll, I'll, I'll post it up on social media or whatever. I'll, or I'll feature it prominently in the background. Um, so, yeah, thanks again, everybody, for joining. Um, and, yeah, I've got a new video coming on Wednesday, as usual. Like, I'll probably take a week off around the holidays. We'll see. I haven't taken a week off yet. I, just have, I literally have too much fun with this. It's super fun. All right. Go Mariners. Too late. Too late for that. Didn't happen, but it was still fun. All right. Thanks, everybody. And I am going to bail on this. All right. Thank you.